polycystic ovary syndrome. Introduction Polycystic ovary syndrome, previously known as polycystic ovarian disease, was first described by Stein and Leventhal in 1935. It's now called polycystic ovary syndrome because it's a multifactorial and polygenic etiology with a varied presentation and diverse outcomes. Polycystic ovarian disease, or polycystic ovary syndrome, is the most common endocrine disorder among the reproductive age group, mainly 15 to 25 years. It's the most common cause of an ovular infertility. It's a treatable cause of infertility. It's mainly manifested by hirsutism, amenorrhea, and obesity. The main pathology is increased levels of androgens, the main reason for an increase in androgens is the abnormal regulation of P450C17. The sources of these hormones are ovary, mainly, adrenal, and systemic metabolic alteration. Pathogenesis Basic pathology is an increase in androgens. These androgens cause hirsutism and dyslipidemia increased low-density lipoprotein, and decreased high-density lipoprotein. Obesity, hyperandrogenism, and dyslipidemia run in a vicious cycle. Obesity causes hyperandrogenism by providing excess free cholesterol for steroidogenesis and hyperandrogenism, then causes dyslipidemia and obesity. Hyperandrogenism is manifested by hirsutism, acne, and androgenic alopecia. Levels are not high enough to cause virilization. These androgens are being produced from the ovary mainly and also from the adrenal. Granulosa shows ineffective aromatization, defective central aromatization, and theca, as in normal states produces androgens. These androgens released decrease sex hormone binding globulin levels, Decrease in sex hormone binding globulin increases free testosterone and estradiol, E2. All the androgens, hence released from the ovary and adrenal, undergo peripheral aromatization. Peripheral aromatization is mainly in adipose tissue, as adipose has higher levels of aromatase activity. These excess androgens undergo excess aromatization to produce excess of estrone, E1. Estrone is the principal estrogen formed due to aromatization. Normally in the body, E2 is always greater than E1, but in patients with polycystic ovary syndrome, E1 levels are increased. E2 is at mid-follicular phase level. Therefore, in polycystic ovary syndrome, E1 is greater than E2. That is, reversal of E2 to E1 ratio is seen. Excess estrone due to aromatization and excess estradiol due to the release of protein-bound form lead to a hyperestrogenic environment, steady-state rise in estrogen. Hence, all adverse effects of hyperestrogenism can be seen, cancer of the breast and cancer of endometrium. This excess estrogen causes negative feedback at the pituitary to decrease the release of follicle-stimulating hormone. Decreased follicle-stimulating hormone then causes an arrest in the development of follicles and their further development is not possible due to low follicle-stimulating hormone levels, hence all of them retard at that stage and undergo cystic degeneration, producing polycystic pattern. The same excess estrogen then causes a release of luteinizing hormone from the pituitary. Estrogen has positive feedback for luteinizing hormone. This luteinizing hormone is tonically elevated and not as luteinizing hormone, surge, or luteinizing hormone peak. As a result of the absence of luteinizing hormone surge, there is no ovulation. Anovulation is a rule in polycystic ovary syndrome. As there is no ovulation, there is no corpus luteum formation, and no corpus luteum means no progesterone, hence progesterone levels fall. Low progesterone causes oligomenorrhea, or sometimes even secondary amenorrhea. Unopposed action of estrogen due to hyperestrogenism with no progesterone predisposes endometrium to neoplasia. Increased luteinizing hormone causes further elevation of androgens. Luteinizing hormone acts upon the theca cells to release androgens. The vicious cycle goes on. 
gross pathology. Ovaries are enlarged, two to five times the normal size. Tunical albuginia is thickened. There is theca hypertrophy, stromal hyperthecosis, and multiple follicular cysts are localized along the surface of ovary. Metabolic X syndrome and polycystic ovary syndrome. Polycystic ovary syndrome is related to the metabolic X syndrome. Any three of the following five should be present to call it metabolic X syndrome. Abdominal obesity, waist circumference greater than 88 centimeters or 35 inches. Triglyceride greater than 150 milligrams per deciliter. High density lipoprotein. Cholesterol less than 50 milligrams per deciliter. Blood pressure greater than 130 over 85 millimeters of mercury. Fasting blood sugar of 110 to 126 milligrams per deciliter and two hours after eating blood sugar of 140 to 199 milligrams per deciliter. Insulin resistance and polycystic ovary syndrome. Insulin resistance is the hallmark of the pathophysiology of polycystic ovary syndrome. Insulin resistance is always associated with increased insulin secretion. Hyperinsulinemia causes increased ovarian androgen production and decreased sex hormone binding globulin production. Insulin also causes theca hypertrophy. Theca is acted upon by luteinizing hormone to release more androgens. Insulin resistance is calculated by serum fasting blood sugar or serum fasting insulin. A value of less than 4.5 indicates resistance. Insulin resistance in these patients is manifested by obesity, acanthosis nigricans, hyperpigmented velvety patches on the nape of neck, axilla, submammary sulcus, and thighs. These patients are the high-risk group for the development of diabetes in the future. Hair and syndrome has the following features. Hyperandrogenism, insulin resistance, and acanthosis nigricans. Long-term consequences. Increased risk for cardiovascular diseases due to obesity and dyslipidemia. Increased risk of diabetes. Increased risk of endometrial cancer, three times. Increased risk of ovarian cancer, two times increased risk of breast cancer, and ovulatory infertility, hirsutism, increased risk of depression and mood disorders, increased risk of diseases associated with metabolic X syndrome, osteoporosis and polycystic ovary syndrome. Polycystic ovary syndrome is always characterized by hyperandrogenism and hyperestrogenism. Both of them are protective for osteoporosis. Ovarian cancer. Evidence-based medicine shows that the risk of ovarian cancer is increased in polycystic ovary syndrome. We have a theory of incessant ovulation, which means more ovulation, more risk of cancer. But polycystic ovary syndrome is an exception to the rule because the etiology of cancer in polycystic ovary syndrome is due to the use of a gonadotropin-releasing hormone, human menopausal gonadotropin, etc., for ovulation induction. Diagnostic Criteria Rotterdam Criteria, 2003 Any two of the following three should be present to diagnose a patient with polycystic ovary syndrome. Ovulatory dysfunction, such as oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea. Clinical, hirsutism or acne or alopecia, or biochemical evidence of hyperandrogenism polycystic ovarian morphology on ultrasound scan. Sonographic findings in the case of polycystic ovary syndrome include greater than 12 small cysts, each not more than 2 to 9 millimeters in diameter, increased ovarian volume greater than 10 milliliters, increased amount of stroma relative to the number of follicles. Only one ovary with these findings is sufficient to define polycystic ovarian syndrome, other findings, like pearl necklace appearance in which follicles are distributed underneath the capsule in and the perceived increase in stromal echogenicity, have been eliminated as diagnostic criteria. Cystic ovaries are not important alone. 
Although cystic ovaries are present in most women with chronic hyperandrogenic anovulation, polycystic ovaries are not established and are not required for diagnosis of polycystic ovary syndrome. Obesity is not a rule. Observations indicate that obesity relates primarily to genetic and environmental factors and is a common but unessential feature of polycystic ovary syndrome. Obesity contributes to the risk of developing polycystic ovary syndrome and adds to the pathophysiology in already affected women by aggravating the degrees of insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia. Hormonal Review Hormones increased are as follows. Androgens, which include testosterone, androstenedione, and dehydroepiandrosterone sulfate. Luteinizing hormone greater than 10 international units per liter. Estrogen. Estrone greater than estradiol. Insulin. Greater than 10 milli international units per liter due to insulin resistance. Increased prolactin in some patients, increased low-density lipoprotein or cholesterol and triglycerides. Hormones decreased are as follows. Follicle-stimulating hormone, due to estrogenic feedback. Progesterone, due to an ovulation. Sex hormone binding globulin, due to hyperandrogenism. High-density lipoprotein and apoprotein A1, follicle-stimulating hormone, and luteinizing hormone ratio. Normal ratio is 2 to 1. In polycystic ovary syndrome, it is 1 to 2. Both testosterone and dehydroepiandrosterone sulfate are elevated, but the increase in testosterone is moderate to high, whereas dehydroepiandrosterone sulfate is only marginally elevated, proving that the source of androgens is mainly ovary, not adrenals. Management if a patient is not desirous of fertility, oral contraceptive pills for managing hyperandrogenism, progestin component reduces luteinizing hormone, and estrogen component increases sex hormone binding globulin. Antiandrogens for hyperandrogenism treats hirsutism, metformin for obesity, and hyperinsulinemia. Reduction in obesity causes a reduction in androgen production and also reduces aromatization. If a patient is desirous of fertility, ovulation induction with letrozole is first line of choice. Alternate is clomiphene citrate. If it fails, next recommendations are the human menopausal gonadotropin and human chorionic gonadotropin shots. If medical management fails, surgery of laparoscopic ovarian drilling or laparoscopic electrocoagulation of ovarian surface. Surgery for polycystic ovary syndrome. Reserved for cases not responding to medical therapy. It's of two types. Laparoscopic ovarian drilling. Laparoscopic electrocoagulation of ovarian surface. In this surgery, monopolar current is passed within the ovary to destroy the ovarian theca when very high doses of gonadotropins are required for ovulation. Advantages. No risk of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome and multiple pregnancies. Disadvantages. Risk of premature ovarian failure if excessive ovarian tissue is damaged and adhesion formation post-surgery. Tailored treatment. Irregular cycles characterized by oligomenorrhea and secondary amenorrhea are addressed through the administration of oral contraceptive pills containing third or fourth generation progestins. Obesity-related conditions are managed through a combination of metformin therapy alongside oral contraceptive pills. Insulin resistance is effectively managed by utilizing metformin therapy. Hirsutism is treated with a regimen of oral contraceptive pills containing ciproterone acetate. In cases of infertility, letrozole is employed as a first-line treatment with clomiphene citrate reserved as a second-line option. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.